Welcome back students. Um, this is Biology 233, Human Anatomy Physiology Lab at Clackamas Community College. I'm your instructor, Christina. Today we're going to go over exercise 38, the digestive system. So we're going to talk about the gross anatomy, uh, anatomical structures, and anatomical structure, the function of those structures. Then we're going to look at um, histology of six different um, GI tract and accessory organs. So just a couple things to pay attention to when you're studying the structure and function of the GI tract. Um, you want to think about where um, mechanical versus chemical digestion is happening. So mechanical is on somehow we're grinding food down, we're chewing food into smaller chunks. Your stomach does a little bit of mechanical digestion, your teeth do that. Um, then we're going to talk about the layers of the tubes of your GI tract because there are some uh, repetitive structures that you'll see in each area. Then um, pits versus crypts. And so on some level the epithelial lining of your stomach versus your small intestine um, has some different structures and we'll I'll talk a little bit about those. Same thing with Rugae versus plique circularis. Rugae are the wrinkles, big, big wrinkles, not microscopic, that occur in your stomach and help grind your food down versus plique circularis, which we'll see in the small intestine has a slightly different job. And then um, looking at accessory organs. So the liver, the pancreas, the gallbladder, the tongue, the salivary glands, those things. So the first part of your lab report is basically looking at some of vocabulary and labeling a picture. Next part of your lab is more the function of those structures. And so you have some vocabulary words here at the top in column A, and you just have to match them with the definitions in column B. That some of the blocks have more than one line, that means more than one answer goes there, and you can use answers over again. So um, before I get into histology or go further in your lab report, I just kind of want to talk about the gross anatomy a little bit more. So here we have a cross section and you can kind of see how tubes relate to the peritoneal cavity. And so this up here, this is your large intestine. I'll use a better color. Large intestine is here, so that's your transverse colon. And then all of this stuff right here is your small intestines. And they kind of hang out at the ends of these fan-like mesenteries. Um, there's another mesentery called the greater omentum right here, and that's this little flap that kind of hangs down superficially over um, the rest of your GI tract. And then I draw your attention to the visceral and parietal peritoneum. We've seen these things before when we looked at the heart, the pericardium, a parietal pericardium, visceral pericardium. So the parietal, remember, is on the lining the cavity, and the visceral is covering the organ. So another word for visceral peritoneum that we're going to see is serosa. That's just the outer covering of the organ in the watery peritoneum versus if it's um, back here, this little piece of the duodenum, it doesn't live in the watery area, so it's going to have adventitia around it, not serosa. Next, I just want to review the layers of the tubes. And so in your lab report, they start with the mucosa layer and kind of work from the inside out, so I'm going to go in that order. So your mucosa is this area right here, and it has epithelium that will touch the lumen. Behind the epithelium is going to be a lamina propria or a little connective tissue layer. And then something unique is the muscularis mucosa. And so that muscularis mucosa is a layer of muscle that specifically belongs to the mucosa and kind of if there's any glands or anything living in between or underneath of the epithelium it will help to squeeze those secretions out into the lumen. The next layer is the submucosa 
and that's kind of all of this stuff in the middle right here and um, it's where you'll find glands often blood vessels and it's made of dense irregular connective tissue and then the uh, next area is the muscularis externa and this is where we're going to find all of the smooth muscle that actually propels food using peristalsis through the intestines themselves one particular tube also has skeletal muscle in it. I'll leave you to think about that for a minute. And then the outside wrapping is serosa or adventitia. Most of the GI tract lives in the watery peritoneal cavity, so it's gonna have a very singular layer of serosa on the outside that's just this one layer thick. And that's basically the same thing as the visceral peritoneum. Pay attention to a couple of structures in the stomach. And so we talked about rugae and we talked about plique circularis. And so I want to contrast those here. Rugae are these wrinkles that are happening on the inside surface of the stomach. And they serve as kind of the bumps on a washboard if you seen an old-timey washboard to when when all of these layers of muscle contract it helps to kind of grind the food against those bumps and then in your intestines um, you also have some wrinkles kind of right here these projections um, and in the intestines they're called plique circularis and they do slightly different jobs so in the and so the job of a plique circularis is to increase surface area um, for absorption. And so you'll have a plique circularis right here, and then you'll have individual little villi on top of it. And all of these little projections are there to increase surface area. One other main difference between the stomach and the intestines is the presence of villi or no villi. So in your stomach, there are no sticky uppy things at all. It's flat, and then it has um, invaginations, things that go down. But in our intestines we have villi and so we have these finger-like projections that stick up and are covered with epithelium. We also have things that go down in the intestines. So we're going to have villi that stick up or evaginate from the surface. Here is our surface, right? And then we're going to also have some crypts, intestinal crypts, that go down. In the stomach, it's just flat. And then we have these pits that go down. And at the very bottom of the pits are the glands. Gastric glands is the whole kind of lower region of the pit. And so now we are ready to kind of start looking at some histology. The pictures in your lab manual, I would urge you to review them because there's some good um, histology pictures in your lab manual as well. And so here we are, esophagus is going to be the first thing that we look at. And we're looking for, you have to identify the layers, so mucosa submucosa, muscularis, and serosa, right? And I want to just uh, change one thing. These esophageal glands, I think, are more prominent in the submucosa, and so that's where we're going to look for those. And if you told me on a test that those glands lived in the submucosa, I would be fine with that. So here we are at the online lab instructions. So very useful. Um, and our first thing that we're going to look at is the, so right off the bat, we can see on the esophagus, there is a ton of muscle right there. So that's all the muscle of the muscularis externa. Then there's going to be some more dark red kind of color submucosa, right? Then there's going to be this kind of lighter pink layer of muscularis mucosae that belongs to the mucosa layer. And then right at the very inside, this is the epithelium proper right here. You can just click on the mucosa and it'll take you to the mucosa. You can see the 
epithelium right here, stratified squamous epithelium. You can see some dark areas of um, diffuse lymphatic tissue. So this is kind of your first line of defense against invading cells. Then we're gonna have some submucosa or lamina propria right there. And then behind lamina propria is going to be the muscle of your muscularis externa, or not muscularis externa, this is muscularis mucosae, muscularis mucosae right there. On the submucosa, we can see it's kind of a lot of dense irregular connective tissue. It is the reddest of the tissues, so kind of all of this stuff. And you'll start to see some glands, all of these structures here. Um, are glands or blood vessels. So your submucosa is kind of that dense irregular connective tissue that creates room for passage of nerves and blood vessels and things. Here I have zoomed in on a mucus gland in that. Here is the muscularis externa. And out here we see kind of a familiar thing. These are fascicles of skeletal muscle cells. And so we do have some skeletal muscle wrapping around our esophagus because I can Swallow on command. So this is voluntary muscle. And then at the very outer edge, you have that singular kind of one cell deep serosa, which is the same as visceral peritoneum. So the next structure we're going to examine is the stomach. So again, we have all of the layers. And then we have a couple of different structures that we have to find. So here's our stomach. And so mucosa layer is going to be basically this amount of stuff. And then we're going to have a thin little ribbon of muscularis mucosae that happens kind of between the mucosa and the submucosa right there. The muscularis externa basically right there. So before I zoom in too much I want to draw your attention to this wave of tissue, these waves of tissue, these are rugae. So definitely visible with the naked eye. So when you zoom in a little bit further, you can see that it's kind of a flat surface with some pits that go down. So that's a pit, that's a pit, you know, this is a pit right there. So gastric pits in the stomach. And then at the very base of the pits, anything down here are gastric glands just the base of the pits and the cells that you would find there. In fact, even down here is gastric glands still. Parietal cells look like little hot pink fried eggs and they are responsible for secreting um, acid, the, the raw materials to make your stomach acid. Chief cells are all the darker purple cells, not the hot pink fried eggs. So here's a bunch of chief cells right there. The pepsinogen. You are not going to have to tell these th three layers of muscle apart. Just know that the stomach has three and what they're named. All right, next histology slide we're going to look at is duodenum. So it's the very first exit into your small intestine from your stomach. And so think about going from your low, incredibly acidic stomach into your duodenum. Um, what can you imagine that these glands that live in the submucosa of the duodenum might be doing if you don't want to fry the crap out of your duodenum with your highly acidic stomach contents? Also note the presence of crypts instead of pits. So here's our duodenum. You'll notice the presence of a kind of long villi, so that's one tell for the duodenum. And you can just click on all of the layers. Um, histology guide's great for that. So we zoom in on the mucosa, and you can see um, the presence of villi. So all of these 
structures that stick up are villi and they're covered with epithelium and all of these light colored cells mixed into the epithelium are goblet cells and they're going to help add mucus um, for protection. This is what's really interesting in the duodenum because you can see all these giant presence of glands. And so you're going to have a little muscularis mucosae kind of right at the edge of the epithelium. And then all of this area is submucosa. And then down here will be muscularis. And so all of these are beautiful duodenal glands or Brunner's glands. So we can zoom in a little bit and they look exactly like you would expect a gland to look like. We just looked at those in endocrine. So duodenal glands. And now we're gonna contrast that with the ilium. Now we're at the ilium. And so this structure right there is a plique circularis. That's a plique circularis. And you can see all the individual little villi sticking off of that wrinkle of tissue. This particular stain on this particular slide has goblet cells staining dark. And so sometimes they'll be white because they don't pick up the stain, and sometimes they will pick up the stain extra. Those are goblet cells living in simple columnar epithelium in the ilium. And then if we go to the bottom of a crypt, it's just basically the base of the villi and you can see a little bit of that muscularis mucosi right down here in blue. That's the boundary basically of the mucosa looking for and so this stuff right here that's a, a Peyer's patch or diffuse lymphatic tissue found in the ileum. And then you can see the two directions of muscularis externa. So remember, you're going to have, um, you have a tube, right? And so here's our tube. So you're going to have some muscle that circular wraps around the tube like this. And then you're going to have some muscle that is longitudinal to the tube like that. And so we're going to see two different directions of muscle fibers. And so, um, Here's one layer of muscle. This is the circular layer wrapping around. And then, oh, no, actually, that's the longitudinal layer. And then this is the circular layer. You don't have to tell them apart. Just know that there's two layers of muscle wrapping around the outsides of each tube. All right, so that's pretty much the GI tract proper. And now we are going to go on to the liver. And so these are the pieces of architecture that you need to find. We're going to identify a lobule of the liver. And then each lobule has a central vein in the middle. And then we're going to be looking for this structure called a portal triad. And so it's basically going to be an area with three separate kind of tubes. And we'll be looking for all three together in a certain area. So these are what liver lobules look like histologically. And so it's kind of a hexagonal shape. And then the dot in the middle is the central vein. And they have little connective tissue wrappings around them. Sometimes these hexagons are really obvious and sometimes they're not. And I just want to talk a little bit about the structure of those liver lobules. Um, all right, and so here is our liver lobule, all right? We have our hexagon shape. And here is a portal triad, that thing right there. So there's three different kinds of vessels in it. You're going to have a bile duct. You're going to have uh, an art, an, a branch of the uh, hepatic artery. And you're going to have a branch of the um, hepatic portal vein. So what happens is two things come in at the corners of these liver lobules. And so these triads kind of occur right at the corners or edges um, of the, the um, hexagonal liver lobule. Two things are going to come in. So um, blood, fresh arterial blood to feed the tissue is going to come in. And then we're also going to filter blood from the gut through the liver 
like so it, the blood goes from your aorta down your to your superior mesenteric artery it goes into your mesenteries it feeds your guts oxygen and stuff and then it picks up nutrients from your intestines and as it's on its way back to the heart to pick up more oxygen and drop off CO2, it's going to go through the liver first. And so that's what the portal venule brings in. That branch of the hepatic portal vein is going to bring in that dirty blood from the gut. And then the one thing that leaves is bile. Bile's going to go out. So bile gets made in the liver and exits through the portal uh, triad, whereas the other two things are brought in and go into the liver lobule. Amongst the spaces, you're gonna have some sinusoids, and so there's gonna be some little passages in the um, liver lobule that bile uses and that blood flows through. Those are sinusoids. And hepatocytes are just the liver cells themselves. That's a hepatocyte. All right, so here we are at a liver lobule. Let's zoom in on a lobule. And so you can't see very well the edges. Um, sometimes our slides aren't nice and neat. Um, let's click on the central vein. So that's the central vein. So everything is basically going to be, um, all the blood that comes into your liver is going to filter this direction towards the central vein. And here the used up arterial blood and the dirty blood will mix together and go back to the heart and then deliver nutrients all throughout the body. So the portal triad is going to be in the corner of a lobule, and I'm looking at a bunch of stuff right here. That looks like a good um, candidate for a portal triad. Let's zoom in right there. All right, so we've zoomed into that spot, and I can see some things that look like a portal triad. The first thing that sticks out to me is the string of purple pearls, and so this is the bile duct. The bile duct has those simple cuboidal cells around it, remember? So anything that looks like the string of purple pearls is going to be a duct. Then we also are going to see um, there's a big vein right here, so that could be a branch of the hepatic portal vein, and then possibly, possibly an artery right here, but let's look at um, another example of a portal triad. All right, so here we have another example of a portal triad. So you have a duct right there, you have this big giant portal vein, and then you have an artery right here. And I can tell it's an artery because look at this thick wall of muscle that it has. And then I can see the simple squamous epithelium on the inside. And the last uh, accessory organ we're going to look at is the pancreas. And so um, in endocrine, we learned the endocrine function for the pancreas. And now we're going to learn the exocrine function for the pancreas. There's our pancreas. You can remember see those little freckles of the endocrine tissue all hanging out everywhere. And then if we zoom in on the exocrine cells, those are all the dark purple um, dark purple cells, and they're going to secrete digestive enzymes into circular structure like that is a little duct right there. And they'll just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so this one is huge. You'd have to kind of zoom in to see the um, simple cuboidal epithelium. That's a big giant duct in the pancreas where exocrine secretions from the acinar cells go and then are deposited, uh, secreted into the duodenum to help digest your food. And that is Digestive System Exercise 38. Thank you.